Good day, my name is Steve Fulton and I am president of Ontario Ancestors and I'm also involved with the local branch here in Niagara. Um, we are located uh, just beside Lock 7 of the Welland Canal at the Lock 7 viewing complex and today we are going to get into a little bit of local history. We're very thankful, and I'm very thankful for uh, Ancestry to allow us to come to you today and just to share some of these resources. We are going to be touching on resources from Ancestry, but we're also going to be uh, touching on local resources of the local genealogical branch and other facilities uh, that you will find in Niagara Falls. Now, my family came from Niagara Falls. Uh, originally, they came from England and other parts of the Niagara region. But the most, majority of their life, uh, they spent in Niagara Falls, and there's lots of information there. Now, I'll be very honest with you. I'm very blessed uh, that there's lots of information uh, that I can share with you today. I don't know if that's going to be the same for your community. Um, or the community that you're researching. I would encourage you to write down some examples that I'm going to share with you today and investigate. Reach out and see if our partner, Ancestry, can give you a hand or other local community groups, other genealogical societies and stuff. It's very important. Uh, and the message I hope to share with you today is that boots on the ground is very important to your research and that there might be an opportunity that you have not thought of uh, using these different techniques. I'm going to travel through the life of my great-grandfather George Warden. Very briefly just talk about different resources that I have found and where that has led me to uh, having discussions with my grandmother before she passed away and just little tidbits of information that have led to bigger discoveries. So today I'm just going to start with a screen share and I'm going to walk you through this. And I'm hoping during this time uh, you can ask questions and I will certainly be there to do my very best to answer them. If I can't answer them, maybe there's someone else who's watching this who may be able to assist or we can find out further information and get back to you on that. So with that, let's get into uh, which I hope to present with you today. And maybe at the end, we'll all have learned a little bit more in that. So today, my grandfather, it's a warden life. My grandfather came from England, so did his bride. They both met and were married in Toronto at the time. My grandfather was a farmer. He was a hardworking man. My great-grandfather, I apologize, was a hardworking man. Worked for the township of Stanford uh, for most of his life. Raised a large family and did a normal farm life in what in, in in building a community within Niagara Falls. So as you can see here some of the images that you can find is um, the first image you will see actually belongs to an, a newspaper article on where they are holding an auction of farm equipment that my great uncle Jack and my great grandfather George um, were involved in. They also had a barn fire uh, from the local newspaper that was captured. And also there is a article in the paper. So when he retired. This is my great grandfather, George Warden. It was a picture that was taken uh, when he was at the, uh, at the township of Stanford. And it is something that I hold very close. 
uh, and it's very important to me. This next picture is George and his wife Edith. And I have very early memories of Edith as a child. I remember going to the cottage out in Crystal Beach in Port Erie, which I have um, yet to explore that avenue in my genealogy and to get a picture of the home if it is still there. But I do remember sitting around a very large um, kitchen table and I was nine when she passed away. Um, and I very much enjoyed that time. Uh, enjoyed going out there, of course, as a small child. Uh, there's beaches and sand and water. Um, I wouldn't imagine any child that would regret doing that kind of thing. My great grandparents traveled extensively. And with the power of ancestry, uh, who has passenger lists and really the bigger records, I was able to track them going back and forth, returning to England to visit family and friends. They took my Aunt Betty, my great Aunt Betty with them who suffered polio in her younger years. And she never married, never had any children, but lived with my great grandparents uh, most of her life until they had passed away. Again, Ancestry provides the birth, marriage, and death records that you can search for. You can discover these dates, these locations, and these resources, which are absolutely valuable in your family history, in what you're doing. But today we want to talk about a little bit more than just the dates. We want to talk about my passion. I'm very excited to get the dates and the locations, when they immigrated and when they were married and when they were born and when they died. But my passion is to understand them. And that understanding, understanding is what I call the dash. And the dash, if you uh, just take a quick peek, uh, take a quick look at a headstone, you will find the dash. And that dash resides between the birth date and the death date of your ancestor. And that dash represents their life and who they are and what they've done in life. And ultimately, who you are through them and what makes you tick and what made them tick in the enjoyment of that. So here on the screen, as you can see, is their marriage certificate and they were married and soon came to the Niagara region, to the township of Stamford, to the county of Welland. Before uh, 1970, it was uh, the counties of Lincoln and Welland, and now it is the Niagara Peninsula region. So we're operating in a time before everything was amalgamated. Again, uh, the records that Ancestry provides, they provided uh, census records that I was able to capture for the 1921 Census of Canada. And I was able to get some information about where they were living at the time, what they were doing, how many children they had. But it was absolutely remarkable. I didn't know that they had two boarders living with them at the time. So that might be another rabbit hole that I may want to chase going down the road. But with this information, I'm able to take a quick snapshot of where they are at the time and what they're doing and how many children that they do have. Another record that Ancestry does provide and is very valuable and helps fill in that dash. And this is just one particular year that they had is this 1963. And this is the Canadian voters list that you'll find on Ancestry. And these are amazing snapshots of where people are because we know the census for Canada, uh, the latest is 1921. And so these voters lists take you out of that time period, takes you into that time where uh, the privacy and the, and 
management of information is a lot tougher. And we can find that they were living at 513 Montrose Road in Niagara Falls at the time. And my grandfather and his wife Edith and my great aunt Betty uh, were living there. But what surprised me by this is just down the road was my great aunt Evelyn and her husband Sydney. I didn't know that they had lived so close uh, at that time. And, and again, that's another picture uh, next time I go down Montrose uh, that I'll be able to take and add to my family, family tree. These are the dashes. These is the information that builds that dash together to help you to understand where you're coming from and what involvement your ancestors had in building a community. Um, that is the ultimate uh, passion that I believe I have in what we're doing. So let's get into the local community resources. And of course, libraries and museums are a phenomenal resource that we can use. They have, uh, especially if uh, they're bigger libraries that have additional resources to uh, digitize and to index this kind of information. The Niagara Falls Museum, as you can see here, uh, they have a photo collection that you can search and you can go through and, you know, you have to get a little creative. Not all of this is uh, searchable as easy, um, but you can, um, you know, work your way through it. And this particular uh, photo that you can see here, and it's hard to see in a distance, but this is a photo of my great grandfather, George Warden. He was a foreman in the township of Stamford and his job was for building roads. And this particular photo, uh, it's hard, it's kind of hard to see, but right in the center of the picture, you'll see a gentleman standing and that happens to be him. And he is guiding uh, a tractor with some workers on that. And you can see the uh, description of the photo uh, in front of you. It would have been great to see that car and, and even had a ride in it, but that uh, simply just can't happen. So this is a picture that I was able to discover by visiting the local museum and getting in there and uh, discovering what's there. Another photo that I have is um, his team, his road building team. And my grandfather stands in front of the big round wheel on uh, the road equipment. And is, this is his crew. And we've been able to identify the road and where he was working at the time. I have uh, a, a the, my great aunt uh, wrote on the back exactly the street address and the time and the date that that picture was taken. So we were really thankful. And the local museum even has this as well. So it's, it's about sharing that information back and forth uh, to this. But it was a great image, uh, uh, again, to capture his life and what he did from day to day. Uh, a hardworking individual trying to build or trying to help build a municipality uh, to be what it is today. I just want to briefly talk a little bit about the local family history society and that I am involved with. I'm involved in the Niagara Peninsula branch of Ontario Ancestors. And we're very proud of the work that we've done. And we try to represent the local community that we have here in the old counties of Lincoln and Welland. The indexes that you will find on our website are projects that we have done that you won't find anywhere else. They're not really on the mainstream of um, Ancestry or other partners, simply because they're too small in um, what uh, this particular collection you can see on the screen only has about 26,000 names in it. 
and it just resides on the Niagara site. But this particular record is uh, from Morrison's son's funeral home. And Morrison's son's funeral home is the oldest funeral home in Canada and records are going back to 1828. And on this particular one, my family, uh, the Warden family used Morrison's sons uh, for all their funerals. And you can see here the last line of the record is actually the line of George John Warden. Also, you will see here and you will see in, in slides going forward, uh, George had children who passed before their time. And you will see that they are listed here as well. And I will show you the records, the funeral home records that um, we were able to obtain. And we were able to assist a funeral home. This project came from a funeral home because there was so much, uh, the staff was consuming so much time in filling research requests. Um, so we stepped in as a local group and we offered to digitize these records just to give us the right to post the index and you know, uh, provide the funeral home cards upon request. But the staff are now enabled to uh, provide this information much quicker. So sometimes in a local community, you may find something that, uh, and, and trip along something that uh, are in dusty old books. And, and that's great, but imagine the power if we could digitize them in, uh, in its entirety and make that not just available to us, but to make that available to others. So this funeral home records are an amazing resource uh, that you can do and use and uh, simply a letter or an email to a funeral home may provide a ton of information uh, that you can do this way. So here's one of the funeral records uh, for an Irene Margaret Warren, Warren, Warden, excuse me. She was six months of age. She had uh, died from pneumonia and she was originally interned in uh, Fairview Lawn Cemetery on Stanley Avenue in Niagara Falls. Um, but that really puzzled me when I first discovered this because I could not find uh, she wasn't buried there, and she was buried in Lundy's Lane Cemetery. And I could never really figure out why the difference. What's, what's going on here? Not until I discovered the true reason for the drowning of Fred Warden um, did I realize that Irene, as you can see on the bottom of her funeral record that the date, August 18th in 1936, she was removed from Fairview to Lundy's Lane Cemetery. And she was buried beside Fred. Now Fred was an odd story. Um, my family, I was raised understanding the fact that Fred died trying to save a horse from the hydro canal in Niagara Falls. And for anyone who's been in Niagara Falls or understands where the Hydro Canal is, uh, nobody in their right mind uh, would do that. Um, it just, there's it's too much risk. The, and this was the story that was shared. And once I got more into my family history and started to understand, Fred didn't die from uh, trying to save a horse, but Fred decided to uh, swim across the Hydro Canal. Um, and with a few of his friends who tried to save him, the Water Brothers, and we'll get into the Water Brothers in just a minute, but um, they had to let him go. And unfortunately, his remains were found in Queenston Heights um, about two days later. So he was buried in Lundy's Lane uh, as per the funeral home card. And then Irene was moved over uh, along with him. The only reason I would understand why that would have happened is that uh, George Warden was um, head foreman 
for the township of Stanford. And, you know, he may have been able to get a large uh, family plot at Lundy's Lane Cemetery, and he wanted the whole family buried together. Honestly, I think it's just guys taking care of guys and, and you know, just providing an opportunity to, to bring a family together in death and in eternity. So these were amazing records that we had at a local level that we could share. And it gives great, a, a great picture of where that uh, particular person was. And it also states things like, Fred's here, there's an, obit an obituary in the review. Well, the review is the Niagara Falls Review, the local newspaper. So at least with that information, I can then go and seek that obituary notice, which I do have. These are all like pieces of a puzzle that are going together. And um, we can just continue on here. One of the other things that we got into uh, and we're very thankful for is the city of Niagara Falls has digitized all their minute books. And it goes back to, I believe, 1920 at this point. Um, and it would be marvelous if it could go further back. But my grandfather, or my great-grandfather, I apologize, uh, because he was employed by the township, um, he was in the minute books often. But he also dealt with, um, you know, subdividing of land and stuff like that. And we will just share as we go through. But where my grandfather had his farm on Dorchester and Dunn, uh, you will see here that the warden subdivision has uh, it was before the council and that they have approved it. And 5% of that land would be going for a park in that area. So that was very intriguing to see what happened to the warden farm. And I know of that park. And I will, sh I will share that in just a moment with you. Um, but now I know what happened to the farm and, and, and what he was doing. But these are city minutes that the councils approved at the time. And we're just going to go through a few of them. And I'm going to try to give a little background uh, as we can. So the Warden Park, the uh, Warden Farm, uh, is, as you can see, Warden Avenue running right down the middle of the image you can see there. Um, Dunn Street is just a little north of Margaret. And Margaret is um, my, my great-grandfather's sister's name. And just attached to Margaret, north of that, or just going up, um, there's a Betty Avenue that's been cut off uh, right near the top. And that Betty Avenue is my great aunt Betty. And so these street names were named after my family. Um, and when I first, when in my early years of getting into family history, uh, I discovered this and I, I sat down for a couple hours with my grandmother. And we just simply talked about street signs and why street signs were called what they were in this particular area. Betty, Margaret, Bonnie, Warden, that's all family. That's all family and my grandmother uh, shared all of that with me. But off to, the, off to the left, you'll see Waters Avenue. And that's where the Water Brothers come from because there was the Warden farm on Dorchester, Margaret area, and then the Waters farm was to the left, uh, towards the hydro canal. So this was exciting to use Google Maps to really put a picture in its place. Now, just down below the city, and I, I haven't investigated why, uh, the park is now called Westfield Park. Uh, and that's down just below the center line of the image. But that far, that park is the original 5% we talked about in concern to Warden Park. It was originally named Warden Park. Uh, would I love to have it restored back to Warden Park? Absolutely. Uh, but I've got to do a little bit of research and 
who knows if that's a, a thing that I want to do. So uh, I was very thankful for Google Maps because Google Maps has actually started the, the conversation during the time and I've always kept this image close um, to help me uh, remember that conversation that I had. So going back to the, the uh, council minutes, you'll see down at the bottom right hand side of the image, you'll see that George Warden and Gordon Weaver, they were foremen. Uh, it's highlighted down at the bottom and it just helps me to know what my grandfather's title was, what his job was. And if, if the image was a little bit more expanded, um, it would tell me what his annual salary was. And that was being approved by the council at the time of these minutes. And um, it appears uh, March 30th, 1951. And um, it, it lays out all the names of all uh, his crew. And, uh, you know, those who worked for him or worked for the city at the time. So another awesome resource to really understand and fill in uh, that dash that I uh, seek so much in my family. So with that, work is a wonderful thing to learn about your ancestors. But there's other things in life and they just work. There's play, there's family, there's church, and there's all the other great things. But one of the most amazing things that I was able to discover in these minutes was that my grandfather gave the land to Grace Gospel Church. The church that my family grew up in, I sat in a pew as a young boy with my grandparents as my grandmother handed me uh, a stick of gum as I'd get fidgety in the pew seats. But the most amazing part of that to discover is that on the walls of the church, the interior walls of the church are plaques and on those plaques are original members of the church and my grandparents, my great grandparents, my grandparents and my great aunts and uncles names are on that plaque. And I'm very thankful that they were able to do that. I've even found old home movies of them turning the sod of the church that was the land that was originally my great grandparents. So with there, um, I now know where the land came for Grace Gospel Church. Um, and um, I have that documented. Below, in the same line of the minutes, uh, my great grandfather also gave land to uh, Sydney and Evelyn, who Evelyn was his daughter. And he did that for all of his children. He subdivided land and gave them land so they could build homes within Niagara Falls. Um, one of the uh, very unique spots of land that he gave away was if any of you have an opportunity to come to Niagara Falls, you'll find the go-kart track as you come down the QEW, um, down to McLeod Road, you'll see a go-kart track either on your right or left, whatever which way you're coming, north or south. And that piece of land used to belong to my family and it was my great uncle Jack's farm. And that's actually where the barn fire at the beginning of this um, uh, happened. And that's where that auction happened as well. So it's very unique that we can find this, these bits and pieces in town council minutes and we can start putting, uh, you know, the pieces together for your family. So carrying on, I also have an original letter from Grace Gospel Church uh, for when my grandfather passed away, my great grandfather passed away. And it just talks about his service within the church and how giving and how caring and how loving he was. And that really helped fill in that part of understanding who he was and what passion he had uh, for his family, his church, and his community. So I'm very grateful uh, for an official board uh, motion uh, that I talked about. Very quickly, we'll just go back uh, to this uh, another uh, 
council uh, minute and it's talking down in the bottom right hand corner of him retiring and him being recognized in the city council minutes and it gives uh, the years of service and uh, when he was retiring and he got a gold watch. I uh, never, don't ever know what happened to that gold watch, but uh, you know, it would be kind of neat if it was ever someone knew where that was. We just continue on um, in the minutes. It talks about uh, him. He retired and this is typical of my family. My family works that I, I've never met anyone of the warden or the Wilson or even the Fulton side of our family. Uh, that doesn't know how to work. And after his short retirement, he went back to work. He went back to, to the township and he uh, was the temporary assistant foreman uh, for the Winter Works project. And it documents what uh, he was to do. And again, it continues this on. Unfortunately, like everything, my grandfather, uh, my great grandfather passed away. And it is even documented in the uh, city minutes up in the top right hand corner and the uh, information that is provided there um, in the township of Stanford. So I'm just going to take a moment to go through a few other things that uh, I didn't really touch on. They don't really pertain to George Warden. Um, I have yet to find anything more, but I'm very thankful for additional resources that I have uh, been made aware of uh, through Ancestry and other, uh, other facilities. Um, as society president um, and being involved at the local level, uh, unfortunately, I don't get a lot, whole lot of time to do my own genealogy, um, but I'm very thankful for what is out there to help me to fill in that dash. This particular record you see on your screen is from Ancestry, and it is the Honeymoon and Visitors Register. And these books, absolutely fascinating. And if you, as you can see, the dates up at the top, and I just did a very quick search for Warden. I wasn't able to find them in there. But these, these registers give, a, again, another snapshot. But even more so, it gives their signature. And I'm not sure if you've ever had the opportunity to apply for the World War II uh, service records for your ancestor, but I did for my grandfather Fulton. And lots of documents came in and I was able to discover so much more about him because I know very little about him. But the greatest thing that I was able to obtain was his signature. And it was so fascinating to see his signature and compare it to others and who did he, you know, who of us grandchildren wrote like him? And, you know, um, just, to, just to try to get that understanding. So these registers that are amazing, uh, if you can find your ancestors in these. And Niagara Falls was a great place, is still a great place to come to. And a lot of people come uh, for a lot of reasons. And uh, these books um, were there. There's lots of resources that I have shared um, in this uh, discussion today. Uh, city directories. I haven't really given them their fair shake. Uh, if you don't know what a city directory is, you are missing the boat on your research. And a city directory is very much like the Canadian voters list, which you can find on Ancestry. The city directories can be found uh, on Ancestry, but our society, Ontario Ancestors, uh, has a partner uh, with Library and Archives Canada, and we are digitizing them and they're going online. Um, your local uh, communities may have them, uh, but they, um, they are coming online in different locations. And you can find out more. Just do a Google search and you can find out more about them. 
local, I talked about this earlier, local churches, items hanging on the walls, records would be great. We wish, I, I wish we had all the records of every church here in Niagara. Just imagine the resources we could pull in. But that's not realistic. And, you know, it requires a lot of volunteers to make something like that happen. But even the plaques um, can share so much about, um, you know, the parishioners past or who was there, or maybe it's about your family. You need to look beyond just the regular books and look on the walls of that. One particular church I was just recently in, um, my wife and I have a, a passion to visit old churches. And in this church was stained glass window. And on the stained glass windows was the transcription of the headstone to the family who donated that stained glass window. So there was about a dozen stained glass windows and there was a dozen families that uh, the headstone transcription was at the bottom of them um, for what they had donated. Information can be found anywhere. It's just a point of looking a little more or a little outside of the box. Senior centers, another great resource. Someone's been around a lot longer than you understands why that street name is called what it is or where the original farmhouse was for that community and what was there prior to that. Genealogy is about the why and that is what we're trying to fill and try to understand and with some of these local resources you may be able to do so. Of course I can't I cannot ignore local libraries and local services local societies um, they're just as important. And during these challenging times, we can uh, reach out to them online and see if we can access some of these resources um, through that process. Royal Legions. Um, I had, uh, very quickly, I had a gentleman come to one of my beginner classes uh, about four years ago showing me a picture of his dad in uniform with a badge on his hat. He knew nothing about his dad, simply just didn't know anything. And he was so desperate to find out. We were literally a 10 minute car ride, not even that, from a local legion. And I honestly um, just said to him, go to the legion, buy someone a beer, sit down and ask them a question. They, he literally took me for my word and went down, showed the picture, bought the gentleman a beer. And uh, the gentleman got up, walked him over to a wall, a wall of honor, and said, that badge right there, sit down. Let me tell you all about that badge. Discovery can be anywhere. And the final one I wanted to share with you, and many of you may be very interested, is a grave digger's diary. Here in Niagara, we're really blessed that uh, a particular cemetery, um, there was a gentleman by the name of Wilton, William Dalton. And William kept a diary from the late 1800s to the early 1900s. And I'll be honest, um, I don't know if every community has this. I, I don't know if Niagara Falls is very unique with this and they're the only ones, I don't know. But death is certain and so is digging a hole. Um, people need to be buried and was there documentation? I don't know. That's for you to explore. But my next slide will just share with you a small article that he, a, a transcribed article from the original documents. Uh, William Dalton couldn't save his life, uh, couldn't, couldn't spell to save his life. And he also wrote, uh, as he seen fit, if he didn't like you, he wrote it. If people liked you, he wrote it. He also talked about the weather. He also talked about how hard it was to uh, dig the ground. 
So this particular gentleman was born August 17th, 1845, and died August 2nd, 1914, at his home in Lundy's Lane, Township, Stanford. Was sick quite a while, age 68 years, 11 months, 16 days. He was a farmer with a long time in his father's farm. Now in this, you need to turn off because he can't spell, so you have to turn off the spelling part of this. Mr. Samuel Pugh Robert was a good man. We'll just, you can let me know what that was well liked by all. Late years, he kept one horse and worked around with him drawing stuff and plowing gardens. A very large funeral. They took him in the Methodist church and Reverend Mr. Hockey preached a sermon. He was buried on the south end of his lot 84, of his lot number 84. The ground was very dry, down three feet. We wanted rain bad. Undertaker, Mr. George Morris and Louie, going back to the Morrison Sun index that you will find on the local branches thing, we can actually tie them together. Blake Away, not really sure what Blake Away is, uh, maybe one of the workers. Uh, opening grave was five dollars, and Clement Hag and Miss and S. White Sexton's great excitement on war with Europe or Europe, as it would, should have said. And I found this very funny when I uh, very odd to to read this. Watching Welland Canal. Not really sure how that fits into a gravedigger's diary, but there, I guess, the war during the time. Uh, was all the talk of town, and uh, it just appeared in different articles in that. So just to go back to the other resources as I come to a close here, I would encourage you to enjoy the value of finding the birth, marriages, and deaths, finding the locations, discovering when your family came to the new world. But most of all, I would hope that this might inspire a little bit of passion to discover who they are, what made them breathe, what made them tick in the community. There are many resources that I haven't shared here today in the local communities, police records, jail records. I've even seen um, not in this community, but in another one, a hangman's diary. And I, how I would be so curious to get my hands on that. There, our ancestors walked the same paths we walk today. And we need to discover what they did and what they contributed to, to building the communities that we live in today. So with that, ladies and gentlemen, I just wanna thank you for taking the time to be with us um, and we would strongly encourage you to continue to discover in all that you do. So in one thing closing, I would just like to share with you that ancestry, and again, I thank them for allowing me this opportunity, is marked as a corporate sponsor of Ontario Ancestors and our virtual conference that is coming up starting June 1st, 2020. Normally our society has an annual in-person conference and this year it was supposed to be in Hamilton. And unfortunately, due to the current situation, we've had to cancel that. You will find this website uh, and all the information at virtual 2020 dot OGS dot ON dot CA. We have 18 sessions where Ancestry is playing a very large part in that. And we're again very thankful for their contribution. Please discover, please uh, work through your brick walls and know that Boots on the Ground will always be there to assist you in your research. So thank you again. Have a great day. Be safe. Take care. Bye-bye.